Hey there, I wanted to introduce you to the latest addition to my handbag collection. This is my new mini Drew from Chloe in cement pink with gold hardware. I have seen this bag blow up on the fashion blogosphere, vlogosphere, and it's all over Instagram. So now that I actually have the bag in my hands, I wanted to give you guys my opinion on it. And if you're thinking about purchasing this bag, hopefully you'll find this video helpful. I want to divide this video into four parts for organizational purposes. If you're not interested in a particular section, please feel free to click on the annotations over here or over here. And just for your information, the video is going to be divided into part one, how much the purse actually holds and what I carry around day to day. Part two is going to be why I chose the 100% lambskin exterior and the different makes and models that are currently available for the Drew purse. Part three is going to be my experiences with the purse and what I've noticed while using it. And part four is going to be seeing it on my body and a couple of outfits of how I style it. Nothing too crazy. So getting right into it, the first thing that I have in my purse is my iPhone 6 Plus. So I was really concerned when I got this purse and I saw my phone because it is so big and bulky, but I haven't had any problems getting it in or out of the purse. It fits in there just fine. You do have to play a little bit of Tetris when putting all your belongings into the purse to make sure everything is, you know, in the quote unquote right place so you don't stretch out your bag, but this is an easy fit. So the second item inside my purse is my Kate Spade wallet. It is an old, old wallet now. Um, it's short, squat, and being totally honest, it takes up most of the real estate inside the Drew. It has my cards, all my driver's license information, um, identification, cash, and I can't leave the house without it. So I actually just move this short squat wallet to whatever purse I'm using that day. But if you have a wallet larger than this, you definitely either want to switch down to a smaller size wallet or utilize the flap at the back of the Drew to hold your cards or some cash. The third thing that I have in my purse are actually two odd shaped lipsticks. I'm rocking the ombre lip today. So I have a Tony Moly Lip Tone Get It Tint in number two and a Chanel lip gloss in number 57. These are both really odd shaped lip products. So I was again worried that just jamming them in my bag would either mark up the leather inside or stretch out the bag. But you know, it they fit in quite well. I'm able to take them easily in and out of my purse and it's not too much trouble to bring two lip products along. The last thing inside my purse are my house keys. There's a spot on the Kate Spade wallet that you can attach your keys to, but I really don't like um, if I'm driving, having my whole wallet dangle, like hitting my leg as I'm driving. So I keep my house key and my car key separate from my wallet, even though there's a place for them. My house key has a separate little coach keychain, and that's basically all I carry on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I do know that I travel very, very light for someone who is just running about day-to-day. -day. Um, I don't carry any makeup touch up. I don't have any extra room in my bag for a sunglasses case. If you do need these things, I would definitely suggest going a size up to the small or the medium sized Drews. The one that I currently have is the mini. So it's not the nano, it's not the smallest, but it's definitely on the smaller side. On that note, I do carry around my Nintendo DS inside the Drew without any problems. It's about as big as my iPhone and it's about twice as thick. This Drew doesn't stretch out at all when I have this inside there as well um, and I prefer just to utilize the space to get more street passes but if you're a girl that needs like a makeup compact or anything like that you still have a little bit of wiggle room to toss those essential belongings inside the Drew but like I said before I don't think the Drew truly has room for a sunglasses case and a challenge that I found myself facing was that Although the Drew is super beautiful and has like a spherical bottom or like a rounded shape, most of my belongings were super angular. So that made fitting everything into the perfect spot a little bit more difficult. You'll definitely have to play a little bit of Tetris to get everything all sorted. So now that the bag is empty, I can jump directly into part two, which is the anatomy of the bag. 
So inside, although the bag is an unlined bag, the interior is 100% beige suede calfskin and there is a little pocket at the back of the purse that's just built in there to store your cards and cash just in case you want to you know free up a little bit of real estate in the main body of the purse i personally like to keep the card of authenticity in that flap at all times i know if i take it out of the purse i'll lose it immediately and i'll never find it again if you want to resell the purse the card of authenticity is definitely a very important piece to have now moving on to the exterior of the purse. This is 100% pebbled lambskin. It is definitely very delicate, but I decided to choose the 100% lambskin purse because I didn't want the stress of having to take care of something that was fuzzy. So suede, pony hair, any of those mixed media purses. Although lambskin is still very delicate, you do have to be aware of color transfer, especially with you know a pastel color like this. I found the idea of cleaning the lambskin overall a simpler process than cleaning suede or the aforementioned pony hair. So what took this bag to another level for me was the hardware. Not only do you get the iconic Chloe lock on the front of the bag, but you also get the added benefit of the lock being magnetized. I feel like not a lot of people know this, but if you undo the lock mechanism itself, the latch on the top flap and the latch on the main body magnetize together so you don't have to fight to get the top flap of the bag onto the bottom latch all the time. So that definitely eases the use of the bag, that way, every time you open it to take your wallet out, you're not spending 10 or 20 minutes trying to get it closed again. And 10 or 20 minutes is an exaggeration, but no one likes to be fumbling at the cash register. You know what I mean? The strap itself is very beautiful as well. It is 100% chain. And unlike the medium size of the Drew bag, it doesn't have a little leather insert that helps with the ease of comfort in carrying the bag around. However, since the mini is so small, I don't feel like the chain digs uncomfortably into my shoulder. It looks like the chain has just been haphazardly tied around the bag handle by the artisan, but if you feel it, you can feel that the chain where the knot is has been soldered together, so you don't have to worry about it falling apart or coming loose in any way. And if it does by any means get damaged, you can always take it directly back to the Chloe store where they'll help you with the repairs. The reason why I chose the Drew is because I don't have anything like it in my collection. All my purses right now lean towards the more utilitarian side. They can be easily paired with suits, carry notebooks and laptops around, but I didn't have any small cute fun bags and I didn't have any in this super light pastel color. So even though my entire wardrobe leans towards navy and black during the fall, I felt like the gold and the pastel pink of this purse could really just add a pop of color and girlishness when my outfits needed it. I also noticed that even though I was wearing something super casual like a little lacy top and like jeans, wearing this purse sort of elevates the outfit to a level of chicness that's, you know, you're not thinking about it, but you still look really well put together. So the reason why I chose the 100% pebbled leather Drew is because I just did not want to deal with the stress of a mixed media bag involving pony hair or suede. As I mentioned before, I find lambskin, although it is very delicate and susceptible to color transfer, much easier to take care of than suede or pony hair. The good news about those mixed media Drews is that the back panel of the Drew is solid leather so you don't have to worry about you know getting friction damage or bald spots on your suede so you can still have like a beautiful looking purse um, but know that Chloe is great and they think of utilitarian designs. If you don't like the Drew or you think everyone and their mom has this purse, I wouldn't cross the Drew off your list just yet. I am gonna put up photos of the current Drews in season and in the past seasons. They have come out with so many different styles, so many different colors, so many different embellishments since this purse has become so popular and such a phenomenon in the fashion world. The only critique I've heard about the Drew is that it can look a little trendy, but I feel that the leather design, the architectural nature of the bag, and just the care put into it, it won't make it like totally out of season if you wear it, you know, 
2017. I think the bag is great looking and I know I'll personally be wearing it for a long time. And if you like it, who's to say that bag looks out of season? You know what I mean? If you like it, just rock it and wear it wherever you'd like. So using this Drew day to day has been really great. Um, I personally love the purse. I don't carry that much stuff around. It fits my needs really well. It elevates my casual outfits and adds that much needed pop of color with the gold hardware and the pastel pink. But one thing that I did notice is that when I'm just walking around, the latch that holds the Drew closed or like the decorative hanging piece just pops out and swings freely. And I have heard from other Drew users that the latch when it's swinging freely has damaged their bags. And I haven't seen this on my bag because it's just so new still, but I don't want to take the chance and I can totally see where they're coming from because the latch is swinging from a fixed point. So the latch will always damage the same leather on your purse over and over and over again. And I can very easily see it like wearing a groove or adding some color discoloration. Um, so to prevent this, instead of storing it horizontally, I've just been keeping the latch vertical. That way it doesn't have the opportunity to pop out and swing freely. So it was very important to me that I called this video a review instead of a unboxing because I was not there at the point of purchase of this bag. And I think the point of purchase is a really important part in the buyer's journey and the unboxing process. So I can only speak about this bag from, you know, when I received it and and my experiences using it. So the person that very graciously gifted me this bag threw away the original wrapping because they purchased it overseas and wanted to save room in their luggage when coming back over here. I love this bag to bits. It came in the dust bag totally sealed and brand new. But when I took it out of the dust bag, I realized that there was no protective plastic on the latch or the hardware of the purse. And that sort of bothered me just because if you're spending that much money on a purse, if you mess it up or if you scratch it, you want to know that it comes from you and not, you know, just from being in the store or, you know, in transit if the latch lock came off and just scratched everything up. Um, so that was surprising to me that there was no protective plastic on there. I don't know if I got the last purse in the store, if it was just a display model. Um, again, I wasn't there at point of sale, but I did wish that the protective plastic was still left on there. The other thing that I noticed about this purse when I received it that bothered me was the person who filled out the authenticity card just like did not care. Um, I'll put a little image of it over here, but you can see they just did not even care about like filling the date out and the spot where they're supposed to stamp where this bag was purchased like from an official Chloe store that way you can always verify it looks totally messed up it's just like a big smear and I think like if someone is spending this much money on a bag you'd at least want to make it nice looking or you know if they want to sell the bag later at any sort of point you don't want them to be like hey this is my authenticity card it's like a two-year-old filled it out. It's real, I swear. Um, but, you know, whatever. I personally don't anticipate selling this bag um, and I'm just gonna use it, but it does irk me a little bit that there wasn't more care put into filling out the authenticity card. So those are my experiences with the bag. I really enjoy using it day to day. I think it perfectly fits my needs. And the two little negatives that I have about there not being plastic on the hardware and the authenticity card being sloppily filled out are sort of minor in the grand scheme of things, but I just wanted to share that with you anyway. So now you get to see the bag actually on my body. So let's go. So this is the mini Drew on my body. You can see here that it's pretty proportional for the look I'm going for. The small looked a little too satchel-like and the Nano was just not usable for day-to-day -day use. So the first look I've put together is a very simple one. It is a simple printed silk shift dress paired with a nude pump and of course the mini Drew. You can dress this up for the office with a blazer, or if you have a long sweater or a shawl, you can use it for a casual night out. 
The second outfit that I put together was a primarily black and brown outfit because I wanted to show that the Drew still looked okay with a outfit that consisted of darker colors as long as you have the right accessories. Now I think the earrings are a bit much in this one but I think as a whole the outfit works together. The final outfit is one that I chose to wear out today. I have a lace top from Club Monaco, a pair of blue jeans on, and a light trench paired with some flats, and of course the Drew bag. So I think it looks girly all together and put together. Thank you so much for watching and I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. But in the meantime, bye!